What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be talking about or sharing five advices that I received from surgeons during my clinical placement. So in my last video I spoke about my experience during my clinical placement. If you haven't watched that, make sure to go watch it. And one thing I didn't mention was after each session I had with the surgeon, I would ask them what they would tell someone or what advice they would give to someone at my stage of med school or if they could go back in time to talk to themselves when they were at my level what would they say and here are my top five things of the things that i was told so this first one was from a general surgeon and she was literally like a mother figure to me because she reminded me so much of my mom so it was super nice and what she said was whenever you have a patient always 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 take your own history and perform your own examinations regardless of if they've been referred from someone else and they give you their notes or if they did their own examination still do yours because you know what you are going to be doing or what you're looking for but you can't account for what someone else has done still make a thorough investigation and take a thorough history all over again and this is something that i've heard so much or i heard so much throughout my placement even in other rotations as well um the importance of taking a good history and a lot of diagnosis can be made just from talking to the patient because a lot of the times the things that they experience or that they feel that are very key to you know making a diagnosis they are not going to be there when you are looking at them in the clinic or in the hospital they probably experienced it at home or outside of that setting so it's very important to talk to them and get everything as much as you can out of them regardless if someone else has done it they could have just asked them what they ate and what type of movies they like watching that's obviously a joke but you get what i mean they could miss out on a lot of other important things as well okay advice number two this came from a bariatric surgeon. He's one of the first ones, I think, in Cyprus. And his advice was very plain, simple. Don't rush. That was all he said, don't rush. So I think he was talking about this in the context of surgery. He had spoken to us about um, how some surgeons or young surgeons might feel a bit overzealous whenever they go into the theater room and they're performing an operation and for some reason they feel like they have a record time to beat and they don't exactly take their time to do things properly as they should they might just do it in a very hurried manner and that could only lead to potential complications so he was telling us that we shouldn't like ever feel like we should be in a hurry just do some do the procedure as you're meant to do it and it also applies to like in the first advice, taking history, take your time when you are talking to the patient, don't rush through questions or whatever, just take your time, be patient. So the third advice came from a, he was also a general surgeon, but um, the thing about general surgery is you can be a general surgeon, but you can also specialize in, you can have subspecialties. So I don't exactly want to say what their specialties are because then they might, I'm not sure how much information they would like to be out there about them. So I think he was the oldest surgeon that I was with and just going into his office alone, you could already tell the kind of person that he was. Like there was a huge, there was a sign on his door that said, no phones. And then you go in and there's literally no computer no he doesn't have a mobile phone as much as i could see anyway he only has one phone and it's one of those home phones or the ones that you find in the hotel rooms and it's just for his secretary so he either calls his secretary to print things for him or um they call him to like tell him that there's a patient that's around that is gonna come in or something right so i found that very interesting it seemed like he's one of those people that just kind of for the most part rejects technology all his files all his patient notes were all written handwritten his history was handwritten he had a huge shelf behind him with textbooks and 
all the patient files, everything, lettered, like archived, all of that. He had one from, I think, 19 something before I was born of a patient that came to see him. Whereas other surgeons or doctors I've been with, they have like their computer, their MacBook and or whatever. And um, they have everything online. They can just Google the um, condition or disease that they want to show the patient about. Whereas he brings out the textbook, knows the page that he's going to open so to show them. I found it so crazy. It was, it was amazing that there's still someone so traditional, I guess. Um, so his advice was that regardless of who you are treating, whether it be a family or a celebrity or someone of high status, perform the procedure as you have before or as you normally would. Don't feel like you have to do something different or do something fancy. Just do it the way you've always done it, right? And come to find out after I had a placement with him that he actually performed surgery on a high status political person. So I guess that's why he gave that advice. And it made a lot of sense because sometimes when we are dealing with people that are personally like related to us, we tend to try to do something more or do something special. Like you feel like you have to do more than you would a normal person. but. In reality that's only going to just increase your margin of error because you've done this so many times before you'd be successful at doing this just do it the exact same way like there's no reason why you should change anything if you've already had a good success rate with doing it the traditional the standard way before okay so in my last video i spoke about um the most interesting surgery that i've seen which was with a robot and the surgeon that I saw that surgery with, he gave me advice number four, which is to decide on which field or which branch you'd like to go into, right? Like either surgery or GP. And he didn't mean like specialty or subspecialty or whatever, just which one. Are you going to be a surgeon? Are you going to be, you know, a general practitioner? And honestly, as someone who is currently struggling to pick between neurosurgery, GI surgery, cardiothoracic or cardiology and psychology, that wasn't what I wanted to hear. <laughs> and I'm sure he could see the look on my face as well. That was not what I wanted to hear that I need to pick at this stage now that I'm going to do surgery or something else. And man, I don't even know. I don't even know. I mean, yeah, I'm just telling you guys, like, that's what he said. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to listen to it. I'm just going to let, let it play out because I don't think I will have enough knowledge about the field yet to be able to make that decision. But yeah, if you guys do, then you know, decide. And let me know in the comment section if you know what field that you're going to practice in or if you're still stuck between a few like me. Okay, so last but not the least, um, advice number five came from another very experienced surgeon. Um, he was also super nice. He, the f funny story, I was with another doctor who was actually a student of his who shadowed him when he was in med school. So, and he's still working. That's, it's so crazy. So that just shows you how long he has been in the field and his advice was there is so much to learn as doctors and we can't learn everything but make sure to learn the basics understanding the fundamentals will help you in whatever specialty you go into don't just study to pass exams study to be a good doctor you can cheat on exams all you want but you will only be cheating yourself when you need to put that knowledge to use and yeah i think that's basically self-explanatory um the foundation is very 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 important if the fundamentals are in there you, you have nothing to build up on it's just not gonna you're not gonna be as efficient as it should be and honestly as someone who has occasionally well, a lot of times actually just studied two past exams 
I was very happy to hear that because it made me realize that I need to be doing some study, some more studying on my own rather than just studying when exam period comes around. Like I need to be able to have that knowledge base, that foundational knowledge to be able to build upon. It shouldn't be when I go into the hospitals that I'm gonna start trying to learn new things or trying to remember what is what that I should have known before in med school. And something that I think about a lot and I've spoken to some people, like some of my classmates about is how going into this field, like you need to realize that you're not doing it for yourself. Yeah, there are people's lives that are at risk by your lack of, you know, hard work or whatever. If you don't try to know as much as you can, you're kind of being careless with the lives that are going to be entrusted in you. So yeah. I think that explains itself really. I don't really I don't really have anything else to say about it. Um but yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos, subscribe below. And yeah, see you guys in the next one.